What's good, good people, and welcome to the refreshingly cool town of De Lat in South of Vietnam. I drove here from Bao Lac. It took two days to get here as I was testing the bike out, but so far so good. I'll give you a little rundown in a bit. But today I'm going to explore the town. I'm not going to lie, I've had a bit of uh, adventure fatigue recently, but I'm back on it. I've got a lot to see and I've got not a lot of time, especially on this bike, to get across Vietnam. It's a lot bigger than I imagined, but I'm in good spirits. But this morning is sort of slow. I'm going to read my book a little bit and get a coffee, and then we're going to get on the bike and go and explore this town. It's so nice. It's in the mountains. It's cool. I can finally wear a jumper again. And we're going to see, you know, the, the Southeast Asia things. Waterfalls, maybe a temple, and maybe even a coffee plantation, which I'm actually quite excited to see. So, anyway, coffee time. So I found this very cool coffee shop called Delicious. I actually haven't gone for a coffee for once because I had three cups of coffee with my breakfast this morning and in fear of shaking for the rest of my day and feeling a little bit sick, I'm going for a lemon and honey tea. It looks and smells good. Nothing like a quick read and a nice drink to start the day. Now let's get to it. This jumper isn't going to last long because the sun is out, we can't see a cloud in the sky and it's getting hot. But let me just show you the bike and what's going on. So this is the bike I have, it's the Honda Win Sufat. And so far everything has gone good. All I have done to it is gave it a oil chain when I got out of Ho Chi Minh. And I also tightened the chain just so it ran a little bit better. I think I'll be doing that pretty much every 400 kilometers to try and keep it up as well as I can. And yeah, the only annoying thing is that it's pretty hard to do when you're getting into a busy city to do the navigation. And the, um, the phone thing is a bit too small for this huge 7 Plus. But it's okay. It's all working. In touch wood, it continues to work. But anyway, let's get out in this town and out to the countryside a little bit and see what it has to offer. So, first stop finally exploring in the countryside and take a look at this. Beautiful. It's so peaceful when you get out here. Been in the city for so long, Siem Reap, Phnom Penh, Ho Chi Minh. It just feels so refreshing to finally be out here in the open with the nature and the scenery. So, stop number two today is the Neymoy uh, Coffee Gardens. I'm not sure if we can get a tour here, maybe see how they grow some coffee, but definitely get a coffee even though I've had too many today and take some nice pictures and beautiful flowers around here. So I'm not exactly sure, I'm still trying to look for someone to explain, but there's something to do with weasels and the poop in the way the coffee is made here. Don't quite understand it. But let's see if I can find out. Here you can see that they're drying the coffee beans and then they have a bunch of weasel cages. I've heard it's something to do with pooping out the coffee beans and then I guess they're dried here and then you eat and drink them? I gotta find this out. I gotta. Do you want to smell? Yes, please. Do you want to smell? Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Because it's very good. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. 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 Can you explain to me how this weasel One, coffee? Two, weasel coffee? Yeah, how, how, what makes it weasel coffee? 
they eat the coffee beans, okay. the fresh one, and then after that they should, like they pull it down, then we use that to make the coffee. Really? Yeah, that we call. And then, pizza. do you clean it or? Yeah, we have to clean it and after processing. So why do you why why is it better taste if yeah, they eat it? Like um like depend on the Indonesia researcher. Yeah. They find it is less caffeine than the normal coffee. Oh, so it's less amount of coffee yeah. because they've eaten it. Yeah, because they eat oh. in, in the stomach of the weasel, they have some enzyme or acid like to reduce them. Ah, so they're not as strong. Yeah, it's not too strong. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I think I have to try some of the yeah, weasel, weasel coffee. Yeah, Which one is your favorite out of the mocha cherry and the mocha? Okay, I'll try a mocha weasel coffee. So I have my answer. I don't know why they always love to just blast loud music everywhere. But anyway, weasel coffee. So apparently, due to Indonesian research, from the weasel eating the coffee and then pooping out, it makes it a little uh, less stronger. I'm guessing it adds a different type of flavor that is very good. So I'm going to try. I'm going to try the weasel mocha coffee, and yeah, I'll give you my review. But yeah, they had some amazing other flavors as well. Just regular coffee with the uh, like added added butter and the beans smelled so strong. It was delicious. If you know how much I like coffee, yes. I'm excited to try this one. So it's presented like this. You've got a, the ice, because I'm having an iced coffee. In a little filter situation, you can see in here, the coffee is brewing, got nice hot, and it's pouring very, very slowly. And then we've got some sugar, but I don't need that. Yeah, hopefully it starts to speed up a bit and I can actually drink this weasel coffee today. Five minutes later, and it's apparently done. So, first taste of weasel poop coffee. It smells pretty good. It's not bad at all. It's actually got tons of flavour and, God, compared to if you've ever had the Lao or the Lao coffee was the worst coffee I've had in my life. This is actually really good. My question is, how did the Indonesians find this out? What were they thinking when they were looking for more flavours in, in poop? But anyway, it worked. The lat is known as the town of flowers as well. I think you can see why everywhere you go, there's just all different colours, beautiful flowers everywhere. But anyway, we use a poop coffee done. Now to the elephant waterfalls. Very animal based day. So just a short drive up to the elephant waterfall. Next stop. One thing about here in South Vietnam is as much as it's very well travelled by uh, Westerners and English people, there is literally no English sign. So a lot of the time wandering around like, oh, is this actually what it is? I can't hear it. Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, we found it and that's why I use map to me. So let's go check out this waterfall. Becoming a bit of a waterfall expert on this trip, but this is a pretty good one. So, another amazing waterfall to the add to the list of waterfalls I've seen on this trip. Anyway, I'm gonna head back into the city, to the town, give you guys a feel for a cooler climate town here in Vietnam. And then I just want to talk to you guys a little bit about the trip, where I'm at with the trip right now and how I'm feeling at the moment because it's been a roller coaster lately. Anyway, I'll see you in Dalat.
just got some uh, pastries, but this town is really cool. Not in just terms of the weather, but it's very much French influence. It's known as the honeymoon town. So a lot of people come here and get married and enjoy their time in the cooler climate. But anyway, it's been a full day again, and it's been good to finally kind of get out of the crazy cities. I mean, it is a bit crazy here. I think the traffic is still a bit too much, but it's been a lot nicer than being in Phnom Penh or Ho Chi Minh City or Siem Reap, where it's just utter madness. And it's been really, really nice to just get on the bike and not be going from destination to destination, but just enjoying the place. I mean, I never saw another waterfall or I've seen a million, but it's still nice to go there and see these things and especially try the coffee. So it's actually pretty good. But I think the big city they just tired me out. I was getting a real serious case of adventure fatigue. I think, God, I've got to go here, I've got to go here. We're moving every two or three days, you know. It really, you know, wears on the body. And now, with time running down and me trying to get across the country and try and see everything, I'm kind of, you know, trying to figure out what's the best way to do it, how much do I want to push myself. But like my mum said, she said, you don't have to do everything, just do what you do well. So, maybe a case of just trying to get up to Hanoi in a certain amount of time and then I might try and sell the bike there and maybe take the bus to Sapa if I have enough time and the bus to Halong Bay which I definitely will do but yeah it's been a good vlog and it's been good to make these vlogs these vlogs have been keeping me really focused because even when I'm down and I'm tired I still think I want to make a vlog I have a goal in mind for how many videos I want to make and they just force me to go out there and look at things in a different way look back on things that I've done already and just give myself the best experience to really enjoy my travels so if you've been watching them and you've been supporting me or like giving me good feedback I really really appreciate it because it definitely helps when times aren't so good but today has been very good and I will see you guys in the next one so from me take it easy as always